Now let's put all this together. We've actually calculated and figured out what the equations are for potential energy of simple harmonic motion, the kinetic energy, maximum kinetic energy, the total energy, and even the velocity. And we used a lot of these right here. They stemmed from this nice uh, sort of situation, looking at a spring and then figuring out your um, position and velocity and therefore your potential and kinetic energies. Let's put it all together in an example. And I thought it'd be funny to use this silly pendulum cat. So a pendulum cat is undergoing simple harmonic motion. Now, what do I mean by that? It's this silly cat here. So let's just say this right here is a cat that's undergoing simple harmonic motion, let's just say. Uh, so, I mean, it's a silly example, sure, but um, of course it doesn't really matter as long as it's something that's in simple harmonic motion. In this case, he has a mass of five kilograms, uh, has an angular frequency of eight seconds to the minus one with an amplitude of 30 centimeters. So what is his maximum speed? And we're also going to ask about something about his uh, velocity, and we're also going to ask something about his total energy. Let's start from the beginning here. So this here is a cat that's undergoing simple harmonic motion. Uh, so that means we have, this is your cat. Let's just assume he's a pendulum. Of course he's not though, he's this, he's this cat, right? But he's going back and forth like this. So there, and he can also go over there. He's sort of going back and forth. At this point right here, what happens? At this point, this is your equilibrium. So that's when x equals zero. And if x equals zero, then your potential energy, which is kx squared, well, that's just gonna be zero. And that means then that your velocity here is going to be at a maximum. And if your velocity is at a maximum, that means your kinetic energy is also at a maximum here. And what happens over here at this, well, this is when your displacement is at a maximum. What happens then? Well, that means your potential energy is also at a maximum. In this case, it won't be kx squared because it's not a spring anymore. But in this case, it's still potential energy is at a maximum. Your velocity will be zero, and therefore your kinetic energy will be zero at this point. This is sort of this situation. Remember I told you before, it really helps to sort of draw what's going on. Well, that was for a mass on a spring. In this case, I want this cat that's going on a pendulum. But same sort of idea here. So what happens for his maximum speed? Where does that happen? Well, at the top over here, his speed is zero. So his maximum speed happens here. So this is the key thing here. His maximum speed happens when, um, well, we could say here, um, when x equals zero. So v max when x equals zero. I think that's the key to doing this. Let's maybe also figure out some of these uh, variables here. So mass of five kilograms, that means M equals 5.0 kilograms. That's the mass. Angular frequency of eight seconds to the minus one. That means we have omega equals eight seconds to the minus one. And the amplitude, that tells you X zero. That's your maximum displacement. That's what your amplitude is. But keep in mind it's 30 centimeters. This is a trick question because this then is 0 0.3 meters. That's the key, I think, you know, don't forget that. So these are the different things that I know. Well now, if I'm trying to find V max when X equals zero, I have an equation for the velocity at any given moment. I have this equation right here, that the velocity is equal to plus or minus omega times X zero squared minus X squared. Well, I can now figure that out because I have that here. So velocity equals plus or minus omega times square root of x zero squared minus x squared. But we just said x equals zero, so that one cancels out. So therefore, my maximum speed then is going to be at omega times, and in this case here, square root of x zero squared, so it's just gonna be like this. So that's all I have to do here. Whoops, not even squared, sorry. Square root of something squared, it's just that. Now we could technically say plus or minus, but it happens at zero here. So there's only one solution answer here. There's one solution. So this one right here, then we could say, well, what's my omega? It's eight. And my maximum displacement here, we're going to say 0 0.3. So eight times 0 0.3, it's just like saying eight times three, which is 24, but then there's a decimal there. So it becomes 2.4 meters per second. That is his maximum speed. 
that was actually not so bad. Now let's do the next one. Next one, calculate Pendulum Cat's velocity and acceleration when he has a displacement of 15 and moves towards the equilibrium from his initial displacement of 30. This is just a complicated way of saying, I mean, here he actually started off at 30 here. So we basically want him when he's basically right here. So when he's, when he's at 15 centimeters here, and we know it's going to be going left. That's the key thing right here. This right here is what we're looking for. We're looking for him right when he's here, going to the left. That's what we want to find here. But we have uh, equations for velocity. We have that same equation. That velocity equals plus or minus omega times the square root of x0 squared minus x squared. That's the same equation that we derived up here in another video here. So I'm just going to use that. So if that right there is the velocity that we need, well then it's pretty straightforward. Then I just put in the answers. So V equals plus or minus, and my angular velocity, or sorry, angular frequency is 8. So I'm going to put in an 8 here, times the square root of, and its maximum displacement is 30. Uh, actually, I should be very careful here. I should actually, if I really want to do it right, I should say it's 0 0.3, because that's what it is in meters. 0 0.3 squared minus, and here I want it when he's actually at 15 centimeters, so that would be 0 0.15 squared. That's what I'm looking for here. So I would do this on my calculator. Here I go, I get out my calculator. So I'm going to say this piece first, I think. So I'm going to say 0.3 squared is that. Subtract from that 0.15 squared. Put that in brackets. So that's, I've just found this thing. I'm going to take the square root of the answer, so square root of the answer. That gets me this and that answer times 8. So I like to sort of work backwards to do these. So I get an answer of 2.07, so that's pretty much 2.1. So I'm going to say that then. This is V equals approximately plus or minus 2.1 meters per second. Now the question is, which one do I consider? Do I consider the plus or the minus? Well, if he's to the right and he's going to the left, then we could actually say that it's negative. And the reason why we could say that is because often the convention is if you're moving to the right, it's positive. Moving to the left is negative. So I could actually say it's just minus 2.1 meters per second. That would be his velocity. Well, that's a velocity, but I also wanted the acceleration. So how do I find the acceleration? The acceleration has this equation. I mean, I could actually use this one, omega squared x. That's the main simple harmonic motion equation. That's an easy one. And because of that, then I could say that it's just equal to minus, and omega was 8, so minus 8 squared, times my displacement, which is 0 0.15. So I could actually calculate that. So here I go. I take out my calculator. And I'm going to say, fine, well, 8 squared is 64, so 64 times 0.15, whoops, I have to make sure I do it right, 64 times 0.15, I get this. Of course, this times negative 1 is going to be negative 9.6, so I can say then it's negative 9.6 meters per second squared. So that's going to be his acceleration, negative 9.6 meters per second squared. Actually, that is pretty high acceleration at that moment, at least. Um, that's just because he's actually moving pretty quick. But anyway, this is just, this is a, a silly example, of course, but this just shows you how you can calculate this. I mean, what this really means is he's accelerating almost as fast as if he's in free fall, right? Because this would be, you know, your acceleration is in uh, meters per second squared. And remember, gravity is 9.81. So this, this cat is actually accelerating quite quickly at this exact moment right here. But of course, his acceleration changes at every moment. His acceleration is actually moving and changing in direction and in value, because up here, his acceleration will actually be zero, right? Because he's actually got... Well, gravity is still affecting him, yes, but I mean, he's, his acceleration is going to be changing in direction and in value all the time. So is his velocity, right? His velocity goes up to a zero over here, for example. So that's how we can actually solve for this. And the very last part then is just to say, well, what is his total energy? Now, total energy is pretty easy. 
total energy is just EP plus EK. So we have to know these. But we can say that at EK max, at the maximum kinetic energy, we know that the potential energy is zero. So if we can use this, this actually came from our graphs before here when we were looking at EK max. Let me just go up and find it for you here. Way up back here in another video, we were looking at this, that when we have maximum kinetic energy, which is this green one here, at maximum kinetic energy, we have minimum potential energy, it's zero. And that still gets you the total energy, because the total energy is just kinetic plus potential. So if you happen to pick a useful starting point, which in this case, when potential energy is zero and kinetic energy is at a maximum, that zero plus EK max is gonna be the total energy. So then I could say that the total energy then, I'm gonna write that down over here. So at EK max, EP equals zero. So I'm gonna say then that the total energy is going to be just, well, in this case right here, it's gonna be EK max plus zero. So in other words, that plus zero just doesn't matter. So there it is. Well, that's easy. And I, in fact, I know my equation for EK max. We actually calculated this before, that the maximum kinetic energy is half m omega squared x zero squared. So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to say then it's one half m omega squared x zero squared. That's all I need to use. And now I know all these values. I know that his mass is, uh, what was it here? It was five kilograms, wasn't it? Yes, five kilograms, so I'll go there and do that. So I'll say his mass is five kilograms. His angular frequency was eight, so omega is eight squared. And his maximum displacement is 30 centimeters, which is 0 0.3, it's important to say 0 0.3 squared. So all I need to do is use my calculator to do that. So I'm just gonna clear this, clear this. So let's just do it like this. So we'll do it backwards. So from 0.3 squared, which is going to be this, times 64, times 5. And I take that and divide it by 2. And then I get my answer of 14.4 joules. So that'll be my total energy, 14.4 joules. So that's how we can actually solve all this. Now, we could have also done it another way. We could have actually just said, um, I mean, we could have actually looked at it like this and said ET equals EK max again. But we could have just done it simpler and say EK max, that's, well, the kinetic energy is just half MV squared. But of course, that was at V max. And we figured out V max. V max was 2.4. So we could have said then it's half times 5 times 2.4 squared. That would also work and give us 14.4. So I'm just trying to show you different ways of getting to the same answer. But either way, that allows us to figure out what happens with pendulum cat. Right? So we can actually use these equations we've been deriving and actually use them to arrive at some real life or, well, hopefully not with a pendulum cat, but some real life situations with a pendulum, let's say, going back and forth.